Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm sharing part two of my October book haul. I got more books than usual last month so I had to split it into two book hauls but I feel really lucky to have got so many beautiful books and I can't wait to share them with you. First up, because my birthday was in October and I was given Susan Clarke's new book, Piranesi, I wanted to also buy myself Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell because I haven't actually read this one by her. It's so famous. I remember I tried to read it as a teenager, but it didn't especially grab me. However, it sounds really good, so I'm hoping, coming back to it as an adult, I'll enjoy the book much more. I'm looking forward to reading it. It's set during the Napoleonic Wars, and it's about real-life magicians, but it sounds almost like a Jane Austen-style novel a bit as well, or at least it's certainly set in that time period, which I love. So I'm really intrigued by this, and I've heard rave reviews about it, of course. So before reading her most recent book, I did want to read this one. So I bought this for myself, and I hope that I will enjoy it. Next, I was kindly sent this book by the publisher. It's called The Swallow, a biography by Stephen Moss. I love Stephen Moss's books. He's such a great nature writer. He's done a series so far about birds. The first was on the robin, a biography. Then there was the wren, a biography. He also wrote a book called The Twelve Birds of Christmas, which is a lovely Christmas read. And then this is the most recent, The Swallow, a biography. My memories of Yorkshire when we first arrived in the summer will always be linked to swallows. I don't think I've ever seen so many before in my life. And they're such a beautiful bird. There's something really special about seeing swallows wheeling in the summer skies. And I can't wait to read more about the bird and just to know more about them. Something I'm really loving about living in the countryside is that I see birds on a daily basis and really interesting birds, many of which I haven't really seen before or haven't seen very many of them. So I love reading about, about birds anyway, but now that I actually see them too, it's even more special to me. So before next summer, when the swallows come back, I definitely want to have read this book so I know more about them. And I love these because they're also beautifully illustrated. I think these make charming gifts for people as well. And I'm really impressed that for the price point of these books, I think that this one's £12.99. And I actually think for the price point, this is such a beautifully put together book. Like there are colour illustrations all throughout it. So it's a joy to read these, not only because of Stephen Moss's wonderful nature writing, but also because of the beautiful illustrations that go all through the book. And it follows the swallow's life through a whole year, which is really interesting too. So yeah, I love these and I was so happy to get the latest in the series. And then another book I was sent is called Reynard the Fox, and this was published by the Bodleian Press, and they sent me a copy of this book, which was lovely. This was on my October wish list, so I was so happy to get it. It's got such an arresting cover. And these, this story has been retold by Anne Louise Avery. Stories about Reynard the Fox were apparently hugely popular in medieval Europe, but they've since gone out of fashion, especially in the UK. I hadn't heard of the character of Reynard before. So it's been really fun to start reading through this book. And Anne Louise Avery has put so much research into it. She's based her story on um, a, an original translation, I think, by Will yes, William Caxton. And that was a best-selling translation, apparently, in the 15th century. But this has been modernised, language has been updated, although she has 
um, intentionally kept some medieval words and phrases in the book which I enjoy but the female characters have been given more agency in it she's also invented fresh characters and she's really just fleshed out the stories and the characters a lot in this book so I'm looking forward to reading more of it it makes quite fun bedtime reading and Reynard is quite a sort of wily fox he's a bit of a Robin Hood character almost and he stands up against the wealthy and the corrupt and the greedy so I'm enjoying it so far I was also sent this book by the publisher Head of Zeus. It's The Little Library Christmas by Kate Young. This is such a sweet little book. It's full of wonderful Christmas recipes, many of which are inspired by Christmas literature. So there are recipes in here based on Little Women, for instance, and the lovely famous Christmas scene in that. She also mentions other favourite authors of mine, like Nancy Mitford and Elizabeth Jane Howard. So this is such a lovely read, and it will definitely get you in the festive spirit. There are beautiful photographs all through the book as well. I can't wait to try out a lot of the recipes, but it's also a fun book to read as well as to cook from. I've interviewed Kate Young on my podcast in the past. I love her previous cookbooks too. There's the Little Library Cookbook and the Little Library Year. And they're both so much fun. And I love her idea of baking, well, making recipes. She both has baking as well as normal cooking recipes in her books. But I love the way that she creates dishes inspired by literature. I think that's such a fun idea. And this little Christmas companion is wonderfully festive. I highly recommend it. It would also make a brilliant stocking stuffer, I think. It's such a fun book. And then speaking of another really fun book, um, Oxford University Press sent me the Oxford Book of Theatrical Anecdotes by Giles Brandreth. And I've been finding this a hilarious read. I've been so enjoying dipping into this. Giles Brandreth has been involved in theatre, it seems, for much of his life. He's acted, he's done one-man shows, and he's really been in the heart of theatre and knows so many actors and actresses and he's collected a lot of anecdotes from both very famous actors to slightly less well-known ones but many of these anecdotes that he's gathered together about acting, about the stage, about theatre life in general, many of them are very very funny. I love one in here that's about Judy Dench and she's recalling an incident from her earliest years of acting when she played Juliet in Romeo and Juliet and there comes a point when She's saying a line, I can't remember the exact line, but she's calling out to her nurse, where are my father and mother? Something like that. And her father and mother are in the audience watching and her father, so excited to see his daughter on stage, gets really carried away. And apparently he stood up and said, I'm here, darling, <laughs> right in the middle of the production. And I thought that was hilarious. But there are so many funny stories in here. I mean, I love theatre. One of the wonderful things about living in London for me was getting to go to quite a lot of theatre that was such a joy and even though I've never in any way wanted to act or been a good actress at all I still love theatre and I love the idea of theatre and backstage as well as on stage is fascinating to me so a book like this that gives you insights into theatre life I find really fun and like I said a lot of these stories are very funny I think Giles Brandreth has a great knack for finding a funny story so I'm really enjoying this and it's the sort of book that will make a great Christmas present because it's the sort of book that you want to open up on Christmas Day and just read a bit as you're eating the mince pies and read a bit aloud to family or something and make everyone laugh. So yes, I'm enjoying this one a lot. 
Then another book I was sent in October is The Biscuit by Lizzie Collingham. And I was so thrilled to get this book. I love social history, especially social history involved with food. I find that really fascinating. And this takes a look at why biscuits are so hugely po uh, popular in Britain. I think biscuits, it's fair to say, are definitely the nation's favourite comfort food. So many people here will have a biscuit with their cup of tea, as an afternoon snack, or for elevenses. And in this book, Lizzie Collingham examines the history of the biscuit in the UK. From ancient times to the 20th century, she looks at how the Industrial Revolution caused biscuits to be widely manu manufactured and then available and much cheaper for everyone to buy. There's some lovely illustrations in this book too, which I love because I love <laughs> all of the old advertising posters for things like McVitie's digestive biscuits and things like that. And the artwork of biscuit tins of old and I, find that really fascinating. So there are some lovely illustrations in this. There are also some recipes in here, which I'd quite like to try. There are recipes for things like spice biscuits and Cornish fairings, Easter biscuits, fig rolls, that sort of thing. So I'm definitely a fan of a lovely biscuit, like a custard cream or a chocolate bourbon, something like that. And I really am curious to read more of their history and how they came to be so popular in the UK. Apparently no other nation buys as many biscuits and eats as many biscuits as Britain. So I find that quite interesting and I'm looking forward to reading more about the reasons why. Another book that was sent to me from Virago is Miss Mole by E.H. Young. I read this years ago as a teenager. It's a lovely story about a woman who goes to be a housekeeper. She returns to a town that she remembers from her youth and she gets employed by a housekeeper there. And the daughters of the... Um, vicar who owns the house are very unhappy and Miss Mole helps them to find what they want out of life. There are some lovely descriptions of autumn at the start of the book too that I think influence this beautiful cover by Emily Sutton. So I adore this edition of the book. Emily Sutton is one of my favourite artists and I love this cover and it's a lovely read for the autumn. Like I said at the beginning especially, there are just some beautiful autumn scene, scenes that are described. So I was thrilled to get this one. Then I was sent Poems to Save the World with, chosen and illustrated by Chris Riddle. And I was so pleased to get this book. I love poetry anthologies, as you know, if you've been following my channel for a while. This is beautifully illustrated by Chris. And I also love the choice of poetry in here. There are some really beautiful poems and he's categorised them under fun headings like happy thoughts, everything is going to be okay, with only one life, lockdown. I was actually especially interested to read the poems he collected that were appropriate to the lockdown situation or that had been written during the first UK lockdown. Now we're in another lockdown, I've definitely been turning to that section of this book and really finding some solace and comfort from reading those poems and realising that this is a situation we're all in together. Um, this is a time in history that is affecting all of us. So I really recommend this. It's a beautiful book. Then a poetry book that I bought this month, in fact I bought it as a gift for my mum because I thought it sounded like a book she would love and happily she absolutely does love it. She was really overjoyed by the gift and she told me she thinks it's maybe her favourite book of the year, which is incredibly high praise, but I've also been dipping into it of course and I do love it. It's called The Magic Hour 
and it's edited by Charlotte Moore. It says, 100 Poems from the Tuesday Afternoon Poetry Club. Charlotte Moore is a writer, and apparently she started a Tuesday Afternoon Poetry Club where she invited friends, and I think anyone who was interested and loved poetry, to come to her house, and they'd sit by the fireside and discuss poems every week. And what's lovely is you get some insights from some of the members of that group about the poems that are included in here. I think it's just such a wonderful idea. I mean, if you watch my tea reads videos where my mum joins me on my YouTube channel, and we sit in front of the fire and we discuss our favourite short form literature, well, then you'll know that this idea will really appeal to me. And uh, this is a fabulous collection of poetry. I love that there is a bit of explanation or thoughts given on each of the poems that Charlotte Moore has chosen to include. And what I really appreciate about this book is that although it features a lot of my favourite poems, Charlotte Moore generally has chosen some of their poems that I don't know as well. So though it has lots of my favourite poets in it, I don't necessarily know all of the poems. So I really appreciate her exceptional ability to choose a great poem. And there are some well-known ones in here, but I also think plenty that maybe you wouldn't be familiar with, but are really wonderful. Again, there are interesting categories that the poems have been grouped under. So there's Hearth and Home, for instance, Sun, Moon, Stars and Planets, Landscapes and Cityscapes, Colour, Mystery and Enchantment, Travellers and Wanderers, a really wonderful selection and I think it's, this is such an inspiring book based on a perfect idea and yeah, both my mum and I are really enjoying it. Then I was kindly sent this book, um, Wildana, Wildana, I'm not quite sure <laughs> how you say it, um, but it says a compendium of previously ungathered anecdotes, epigrams and asides and accounts, selected with an introduction by Matthew Sturgis. So this is a great book for any Oscar Wilde fan. I adore Oscar Wilde's plays. I also like his book, The Picture of Dorian Gray. He is such a witty, witty writer. So it's been fun dipping into this. Um, Matthew Sturgis wrote Oscar Wilde's biography a few years ago, and I think that essentially this is a lot of the information that he found when he was researching Oscar Wilde, but he couldn't include in the biography. So it's still really fun. There are sort of letters from people who met Oscar Wilde and their remarks about him. There are some of his brilliant epigrams that I don't think have been published before. And it's just a fun little read, something to just have by your bedside maybe and glance at when you feel like picking up, picking up a book and just having a 10 minute reading session or something because there are lots of little bits and pieces of information that you can read quickly in here but are quite fun. So I'm really enjoying this one too and it would be an excellent present for anyone who loves Oscar Wilde. I also love the cover. I think that that's stunning. I love the beautiful font. So yes, I'm really enjoying this one. And then this is a book that I bought myself. It was also on my October wish list and I really wanted to get this one. It's called The Windsor Knot by S.J. Bennett. And it's the first in what will hopefully be a new series. And the main protagonist is actually the current Queen of England, Elizabeth II. And it's described as Miss Marple meets the Crown, which instantly caught my attention because I adore the Miss Marple books and I love the Crown TV series as well. So I had to get this and read it. I haven't started it yet because it only came out at the end of October so I only just got it um, right towards the end of the month. But I'm really looking forward to reading it. I'm hoping it will be quite a light-hearted read. Apparently in the book, the Queen in her spare time 
investigates crimes. <laughs> so she sounds like she's made to be a real Miss Marple figure in this. And it just sounds like so much fun. I really hope it lives up to expectations, but I'll be reading it soon and reporting back to you all. And then another book that was sent to me is The Testimony of Alice Twist by Susanna Dunn. I haven't read any of Su Dun Susanna Dunn's other books before, I don't think, but I know that she's generally considered a really good writer. And this one does sound very interesting. It says, 1553, deeply divided England rejoices as the rightful heir Mary Tudor sweeps to power on a tide of populist goodwill. But the people but the people should have been careful what they wished for. Mary's mission is to turn back time to an England of old. Within weeks, there is widespread rebellion in favour of her heir, her half-sister, Princess Elizabeth, who is everything that Mary isn't. From now on, Elizabeth will have to use her considerable gall just to stay alive. Orphan Alice Twist has come a long way, further than she ever dared hope, to work as a laundress at the royal wardrobe. There she meets Belle, daughter of the Queen's tailor, and seems to have arrived at her own happy ending. But in a world where appearance is everything, a laundress is in a unique position to see the truth of people's lives, and Alice is pressed into service as the spy in the errant princess's household. Alice herself, though, is hardly whiter than white, and when the princess is arrested, she must make a dangerous choice. Sounds like a really intriguing book. It's quite slim too, so I'm hoping to get through this one quickly. I enjoy historical fiction, and I mean, although there's been so much written about Elizabeth I, this sounds like quite an interesting take, looking at a seamstress, looking behind the scenes, so to speak, at a wardrobe and the clothing of the time. I'm sure I'll enjoy those details a lot. So I am interested to read this soon. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Then Virago sent me this book, Keep Moving by Maggie Smith. Not Dame Maggie Smith, I hasten to add. This is a different Maggie Smith, not the actress, but she is a poet and she wrote a beautiful poem. It's called, I think, yes, Good Bones. Um, and I think she won some prizes for that poem. And this book is, it says it's notes on loss, creativity and change. And it's a really interesting read. It's little reflections, I would say, um, that Maggie has created. She talks a little bit about the difficulties that she's had in her own life, particularly with the breakup of her marriage, for instance, um, trying to get pregnant, issues like that that she's come up against in her life that have brought her very low. And these are her ideas of how to just keep moving through difficult times. And I think everyone has come up against a very difficult time in, in, in your life. Everyone has hard choices to make, tough decisions, and awful things happen. So even though you're not necessarily going through the same thing as Maggie Smith, I think there is a message here for all of us. And I find her writing very moving, but I love how it's also practical. Um, she doesn't sort of gloss over anything. She understands when things are really difficult and somehow she just manages to speak to that without sounding irritating, without sounding overly cliched or sentimental or out of touch. <laughs> and I really admire that today. This, for instance, is an example of one of the pages. It says, all you need to do today is live the best you can. Even if in this difficult time your best doesn't feel like enough, it is enough. And trust that your best tomorrow will be even better than today's. That is healing. Keep moving. 
So the book is just full of inspiring, motivational messages. It's a very comforting book, I think, in that way. And it's the type of book to pick up if you're going through a hard time. I genuinely believe that this would help you. And I find it really inspiring and moving. So I've been really enjoying dipping into this a bit myself. It's very wise and very comforting as well. And then this book I was so eager for throughout pretty much all of October and even before that. It's the new Nigella book, Cook, Eat, Repeat. I love Nigella Lawson, I love her recipes, I love her cookbooks. So ex I was so excited to learn that she had a new one coming out and that this one was meant to be a bit of a harking back to her early days of recipe writing. What I mean by that is that there's a lot of writing in this one, not just recipes, but Nigella has written in her typical way so brilliantly about her life and about her life connected to food, about the recipes that she enjoys. I think she's a great food writer and her most recent books maybe haven't had quite as much writing in them as she did to begin with but she's really gone back to the old ways with this one so I can't wait to properly read this as well as to make lots of delicious things from here. It, the recipes look wonderful, there's so much I want to make already. I love this idea for really simply just roasting quinces for instance because we still have some quince to use up and um, yeah it's just full of really great, quite easy looking recipes. So I can't wait to properly get into this and start cooking from it. And then finally, I was so lucky to be sent this book by Yale Publishing, which is The Bloomsbury Look by Wendy Hitchmo. This is such a gorgeous book. If you've watched my video on my um, Bloomsbury book collection, then you already know I'm a huge fan of the Bloomsbury group, especially Virginia Woolf and her sister Vanessa Bell. So I'm so excited to add this book to my collection of books about the Bloomsbury group. This looks really fascinating because it's all about that very distinctive Bloomsbury style and aesthetic and it looks at the fashion that members of the Bloomsbury group wore. It looks at how they curated their image and also how they portrayed it to the world. So it looks at photography as well as fashion and design. And I'm so interested to really read it. It's full of beautiful illustrations and photographs as well, which I love and are great big pages so you can really look properly at the book, which is fantastic. But yes, I can't wait to read this. I think that um, it's such a wonderful addition to my collection and I was really thrilled to get this one. But anyway, that's the end of my October book haul, part two. I'll put links to all the books I mentioned in the description box just down below. But let me know if any of these books catch your eye. What books did you get in October that you're really enjoying or you think that I might enjoy? I'd love to know. Do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel which you can do by clicking on my face that pops up on the screen over here. But thanks so much for watching and I'll be back again very soon with another video. Bye!